Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and today we're going to learn about basic atomic structure diagrams. Now there are several different ways of drawing diagrams, you can see a few of them here. The types of diagrams we're going to learn are the Bohr-Rutherford diagram, which isn't represented, and the Lewis dot diagram, which also isn't represented. But these five diagrams are throughout history how we've understood the atom to look. So we have two learning goals today. The first is to draw and describe proper Bohr-Rutherford diagrams of various elements. And the second is to draw and describe proper Lewis dot diagrams, or they're also called electron dot diagrams, of various elements. So let's start off with a little bit of review. You should have already watched the video on atomic structure. If you haven't done so, please watch that first. I'll put a link in the description box below. Now this slide is just a review from that video. In order to find out the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in an element, we have to know how to do that in order to draw the diagrams. So we'll start off with just describing what we see in the individual boxes on the periodic table. There'll usually be two numbers. One is the atomic number, which is a whole number, which means no decimals. And the other is the atomic mass, which usually has decimals. It's the bigger number. The atomic number tells us how many protons there are and how many electrons there are. So in the case of fluorine with an atomic number of 9, it has 9 protons and it has 9 electrons. To find the number of neutrons, we do a little bit of math. So we take the rounded atomic mass and subtract the atomic number to find the most common number of neutrons in that atom. So for the example of fluorine, if we round 19.00, we get 19. And if we subtract 9 from 19, we get 10. So there are 10 neutrons in fluorine. So let's look at our Bohr-Rutherford diagrams. This is an example of a Bohr-Rutherford diagram. Let's look at the different parts. On the inside, we write the number of protons. So in this case, there are 15 protons, and we use the symbol P plus to indicate that 15 represents protons. We write the number of neutrons. Here there are 16, and we use the symbol N0 to indicate the neutrons. And then surrounding that nucleus and shells outside the nucleus, we write our electrons. Now these electrons need to be in very specific shells or very specific orbits outside the nucleus. So how do we know where to put them? Well, there are some rules. In the very first shell that surrounds the nucleus, we can fit two electrons and only two. The next shell we can fit eight, and then the next shell we can fit eight. Again, in those two shells that fit eight, we can't fit any more than eight. So it's two maximum, eight maximum, and then eight maximum. Beyond that, you don't need to know for this course what the maximums are. Now, one of the rules is that you must completely fill a shell before moving on to the next. So if you have two electrons, let's say we're dealing with helium, both need to go in the first shell because the first shell will take two. You can't put one in the first shell and then put the next in the second shell because that would leave the first shell unfilled. So we completely fill our shells and then move on to the next to put our remaining electrons, move on to the next to put our remaining electrons, and so on. So let's take a look at an example here with fluorine. These are how we can draw our Bohr-Rutherford diagrams. I'm going to show you two methods. You choose whichever one you like best, and on a test or quiz, you just draw the one you like best. You don't need to draw both. So for fluorine, there are nine protons because it has an atomic number of nine. There are 10 neutrons because 19, the atomic mass, minus nine, the atomic number is 10. And there are nine electrons because the, the atomic number is nine. So in the center, we'll start off by writing 9 protons and 10 neutrons. And then we'll start drawing our first shell around that. So two electrons fit in the first shell, 1, 2. Now we still have 7 left over. 9 minus 2 is 7. Those 7 can fit in our second shell because the second shell can fit 8 in total. So we have 1, 2, and then here we have our third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth electron in total. So this is one way we could draw fluorine. There's a second way which is a little bit faster. We start off the same by drawing the nine protons and ten neutrons in the middle. Now we know there are two electrons that will fit in the first shell, so we write two electrons and then draw sort of a half shell. 
So we've combined both of those instead of drawing the dots to represent the electrons. There were seven electrons that fit in the second shell, so we'll write seven electrons and then draw that shell there. So both of these are possibilities. Use whichever one you like best. Let's look at another example with aluminum. Aluminum has an atomic number of 13, so we know there are 13 protons and 13 electrons, and the atomic mass is 26.98. If we round 26.98, we get 27. So 27 minus 13 is 14, which gives us 14 neutrons. So we can draw our aluminum like this, 13 protons, 14 neutrons, and in our first shell we can fit one, two electrons. So that's our first shell. Our second will have our third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth electron. And our third shell here will have our eleventh, twelfth, and thirteenth electron. So there's our 13 electrons. Now here's our alternative way of writing it, the 13 protons and 14 neutrons. Two electrons fit in the first shell. Eight electrons fit in the second shell. And three electrons fit in the third shell. So we can draw it like that as well. So those are our two versions. Now let's just take a look at the Bohr-Rutherford diagrams, or modified versions with nothing written in the middle. Let's just look at the electrons of the Bohr-Rutherford diagrams for the first uh, 18 elements here. Now pause the video and look for a pattern. So I actually want you to go through this exercise. Pause the video, find the pattern, and once you've found it, you can start the video again. Did you find the pattern? I hope so. So the pattern is that the period, which has to do with the row, tells us how many electron orbits there are. So in that first period where it says one and then hydrogen across, there's only one orbit. In the second period, lithium across, there are two orbits. And then in the third, there are three. Then if we look at the group, which is the column, that tells us how many valence electrons there is. Remember, valence electrons represents the electrons in the outermost shell. So everything in that first column, that first family, has one electron in the valence shell. The next family has two, three, four, and so on, all the way to a full filled valence shell. So if we're looking to draw our Bohr-Rutherford diagrams, this can give us a quick way to figure out how many electrons there are in each of the shells and how many shells there are in the first place. Now let's take a look at Lewis dot diagrams. Here's a picture of the Lewis dot diagrams for the first 20 elements. I want you again to look for a pattern here. So pause the video and look for a pattern. See if you can find it. Did you find the pattern? I hope so. So first of all, we write the symbol for the element in the middle instead of writing the number of protons and neutrons. And then we draw the little dots to represent the electrons. Now what's the pattern for the electrons? Everything in that first family has one dot, second family two dot, third family three dot, and so on all the way across. So everything in the same family has the same number of dots, and those dots are the valence electrons that we saw from the last slide. So this represents only valence electrons, and they follow the same pattern that we saw on the last slide. So everything in the first column, one dot, two dot, three dot, four dot, all the way across to eight dots, with the exception of helium, which only has two dots, even though it's in the last column. So let's take a look at how we would draw these. So fluorine, we'll start off by drawing F, which would be the symbol for fluorine in the center. And fluorine comes in the second last column, which means it's going to have seven valence electrons. So we would draw fluorine like this. Aluminum is in the third column, or the third family, which means it will have three valence electrons like this. So this is how we would draw Lewis dot diagrams, only representing those valence electrons. And we can quickly find the number of valence electrons just by looking at its position in the periodic table. 
Now here's a picture of some more complex versions of how our atoms actually look. These are, are the orbitals and you'll learn more about these if you take chemistry next year in the, and in grade 12 as well. Now these have different um, shapes for each of the different orbitals which have different number of electrons inside of them. So you can see all the fancy different shapes and these represent where the electrons will be located rather than drawing specific dots like we have in our diagrams. So let's take another look at our learning goals. Can you draw and describe proper Bohr-Rutherford diagrams for various elements? And can you draw and describe proper, describe proper Lewis dot diagrams or electron dot diagrams of various elements? If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. Alright, that's all for now. Bye-bye.